All right. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is day four of food. Uh oh. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the old. <laughs> I totally forgot. I'm. Ah, the disappearing food. There we go. Food is Climate Week, where we're featuring many of the contributing chefs to this wonderful book, which is a must read if you care about your planet's future. And if you buy it now, if you look in the show notes, you can get some bonus material that I think you'll be thrilled with. But to introduce today's wonderful chef, who's going to be making multicultural recipes from around the globe, we have the book author, Glenn Merzer. Thank you, AJ. I'll hold up the book too, and mine won't disappear. <laughs> um, so uh, we, yes, we have a bonus offer on Food is Climate, and I am personally sending out the bonuses via email. I just sent out a dozen of them or so. Um, the bonus offer is you send your proof of purchase to foodisclimate at gmail.com. And I'll send you a bonus file of 25 healthy, no sugar, no oil, vegan recipes. Um, and um, so uh, just within 24 hours, you'll get that. Uh, and that could be proof of purchase of the Kindle, the paperback, or the audiobook. All right. So what we're doing every day is I'm doing a two-minute lecture on uh, climate. And then I'm going to introduce Alexandra. Um, okay, on Monday, I did two minutes on carbon opportunity cost. On Tuesday, I did um, two minutes on pasture maintenance fires. Yesterday, I did two minutes on the ocean. And today, I'm doing two minutes on healing. How do we, how do we heal when we have a wound? If you ever had a wound on your arm and you went to the doctor and the doctor dressed the arm, and put it in a bandage, I'm sure he or she didn't say to you, okay, when, I, when you go home, I want you to just keep scratching it. No, they'll tell you, leave it alone. Leave it alone and it will heal. The human body is a self-healing mechanism. You leave it alone, it heals. Animals, it's the same way with all animals. You leave wounds alone, they heal. It's the same with the oceans and with the rivers and the streams. You leave it alone, it heals. And so it's the same way with the earth. If we leave the earth alone, it will heal. The earth is the number one solution to the earth's problems. We just have to leave it alone. So how do we leave enough of the earth alone to solve the climate crisis? And I have a suggestion that we could leave 80% of the earth effectively alone. How do we do that? Well, the oceans are 70% of the earth. And yes, we can still have shipping. And we can still have some pleasure craft, but what's really damaging the oceans? It's the industrial fishing. It's extracting all life from the sea. It's killing marine mammals. It's killing all the fish. And soon we won't have any fish left. So what's the point of fishing if you're not gonna have any fish left anyway? Destroying the corals, de destroying the sea forest. So we have to end fishing, especially the industrial fishing, These trawlers that trawl the bottom of the ocean, calling up sediment from the bottom of the ocean. If we end industrial fishing, we've left 70% of the world alone. Then the land, 37% of the land is for grazing. Another 6% of the land is used to grow food to feed to animals. So if we stop eating animals, that frees up 43% of the land. You add that to 70% of the oceans, you're way over 80%. The earth will heal, crisis solved, plus you get bonus recipes. So that's the solution. Stop eating animals, uh, buy the book, learn about the climate science, and we have to change the climate debate so people talk about animal agriculture, which is the leading cause of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And with that, it is now my pleasure to introduce Alexandra Newman. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about her briefly. She's a licensed food for life instructor with PCRM. She holds certificates in plant-based nutrition from E. Cornell University and in plant-based cooking. She's also a certified personal trainer with a specialization in senior fitness. 
And she loves to take familiar favorites and remake them as simple, healthy vegan dishes. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexandra Newman. Thank you so much, Glenn, for that nice introduction. And thank you so much for including my recipes in your book. Want thank to you. show everybody the book again? <laughs> um, it's, it's really a fantastic book. Glenn is a great writer. Um, I learned so much from this book. I know you will too, if you get it. Um, it's a fast read and it's, it's really worth the, I think it's $9.95 on Amazon. It's really worth the price and then some. There's great recipes in there from famous chefs. Not, I'm not famous, but Chef AJ and Dylan from Well Your World and others have contributed to that book as well. Um, so it's, it's well worth your money and your time. Um, so thank you too, F Chef AJ, for having me on. I'm so delighted to be here. Um, I have um, a business called Resolve Health and Fitness, as Glenn mentioned. And um, the purpose of Resolve Health and Fitness is to teach people how to live healthy and fit lives through plant-based, vegan eating, and physical exercise. And to that end, I have a website, resolvehealthandfitness.com where you will find a wealth of information about plant-based eating. I have lots of articles out there. I have lots of great recipes that are simple to make and use um, common ingredients that you can find at most any grocery store. Um, I also offer one-to-one -one consulting and classes, cooking classes, so check it out. Um, today, I have three dishes that I wanna prepare for you. One is in Glenn's book, it's lo mein noodles. And the other two, Chef AJ, you had asked us to uh, come up with something for Hanukkah. And I have two things I'd like to offer for that. The first is a creamy vegan carrot soup. And the other is called Cholent. Now, if you're not familiar with what Cholent is, I'm gonna get into that later, but I think you're gonna like it. We actually are gonna start with the carrot soup. Um, I want to get this cooking while I make the other dishes so that it will be done by the end because there's a lot of vegetables in it that need to get soft. So we're going to start with that and then we'll go into the lo mein noodles and finally end with the cholent. So creamy carrot soup. Um, I already have here on my stove uh, some vegetable broth simmering. And to that, I'm going to add, uh, I have here three large carrots diced. And I have three cups of broth in the pan. Now the recipe um, for the actual soup, which I believe will be in the show notes, is double this. I am cutting it in half today so that it will cook faster and will all fit in my blender at once so that I can demonstrate it. But you will find that all the quantities are double what I'm talking about today. This soup serves four to six people generously. So we're gonna add our three, our three uh, carrots. And I have here one golden potato, which I've peeled and diced. And I don't always peel my potatoes, but um, when I'm going to make a soup that I'm gonna puree entirely, make it completely creamy, I do like to peel off the skin because sometimes I have found that potato skin in a pureed soup can give a little bit of a bitter flavor to it. So I have peeled that. I'm going to add a quarter cup of diced celery. And last but not least, a large onion diced. Okay, and then we're just gonna give that a little stir. And we're gonna get that simmering so that all those vegetables, let's turn it up a little bit, put the lid on and get those vegetables cooking. Now, normally when I make this soup um, to get the creaminess to it, I make a cream with cashews and water. I'll take about half a cup of cashews, raw cashews, and blend it with a cup of water in my blender. But I know, Chef AJ, you don't eat nuts. And I bet a lot of your viewers don't eat nuts. So I like to always offer alternatives in my recipe. And so for this uh, soup today, I'm going to make my cream using brown rice. And I have here um, three quarters of a cup of cooked brown rice. And I'm gonna put it in my blender with one cup of oat milk. And that's gonna, I, I do love the cashew cream, I must admit, it's, it's a really rich taste. But if you don't eat nuts or you're allergic to nuts, um, this is a nice alternative. So we're gonna 
we're going to get all that rice in there and then we're going to blend this up. That's a very cool idea. Yeah. Yeah. I've tried it with um, white beans, but the white beans just don't give it enough thickness and they don't give it enough of a creamy taste. So we're going to use brown rice and I apologize for the sound of this blender, but it'll only take about maybe 10 seconds. So we're going to go with that. And that's it. If you have a Vitamix or a blend tech, it, it blends everything really fast. Um, okay, so that's cooking and we're gonna add a couple other ingredients to it at the end when it's when the vegetables are tender all together with our rice cream uh, at the end. In the meantime, we're gonna get into the lo mein site. In Glenn's book, the recipe is on my website, I main love. And the reason for that is I, I bet all of you have been to a Chinese restaurant at one time or another. And if you have, you know that they tend to drench the food in oil. And I mean drench. And I before I was a vegan, and I'll get into my story in a little bit. Um, I loved going to Chinese restaurants and I loved lo mein. But even then I thought there's way too much oil in this. So I have come up with a version without all the oil, but still all of the taste. And so that's why I love it. So I called it lo mein love. Um, now I came up with this recipe several years ago when I was um, a member of a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. And even I was a member of this, I've always liked vegetables. Even then um, I cooked with a lot of vegetables before I was a vegan. And the farmer whose um, CSA I subscribed to was always sending me something like this. And back then, having grown up pretty much just standard American diet type vegetables, I did not know what this was. This is fennel. This is the fennel bulb and these are the fronds. And some uh, times you'll find this called anise and it has um, an anise flavor, a very strong kind of licorice flavor, which I don't particularly care for. So when the farmer started to send me this, I had no idea what to do with it. I was chopping it up in salads and I didn't like that anise taste. And then I read online that if you cook it, it really um, diminishes that strong anise taste and it sweetens it up, but it still leaves it kind of crunchy. So I started to use it in stir fries and I created this lo mein recipe. Um, and all we're gonna do with this is we're gonna cut off this, this bottom part right here. And um, I, one thing I'll mention is I make my own veggie broth. I save, a lot of people will compost their scraps, their vegetable scraps, but I save mine in a Ziploc freezer bag. And when the freezer bag, the one gallon freezer bag is full, I make veggie broth. And there's a, a little kind of uh, technique on my website for how to do that. So I'm going to save this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to thinly slice this fennel and chop it a little bit. And I'll even use a little bit of these green parts up here. And then I'll save the rest either for another stir fry or I will put it in my uh, veggie scrap bag. So we're gonna just slice that really thin, as thin as you can. And then I, I just kind of roughly chop those slices. I don't, you know, I don't wanna have a huge piece like this in my lo mein, but I still like to have kind of like crispy chunks. Okay. And then we're gonna save the rest of this for my bag or for some other use. And then we're just gonna roughly chop. And we're gonna heat a pan over medium. in kind of a larger fry pan for this because we're gonna, we're gonna be adding a lot of things. So I'm gonna throw all that fennel in there. And one thing I love about this recipe, and I kind of do this a lot with all my recipes, I like to make them easy. So you cook everything together at once pretty much. Everything that is in this, almost everything goes into the pan at the same time. So there aren't multiple steps. You just get that going and I'll show you what else we're gonna add. And you yeah. could use, yes. Alexandra, I'd love to know what your story yeah. is when you first found out about a vegan diet and when did you adopt it? Yes, so um, my story is that in 2008, early 2008, 
I was eating the standard American diet. That's what I grew up with. Um, and I loved steak and I loved um, fish and I loved cheese. I was kind of a cheeseaholic and ice cream. But one day I was reading an article in the Wall Street Journal, early 2008. And in that article, they mentioned a football player, an NFL football player. And I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. But he had adopted a vegan diet. He was eating plant-based. And he said the reason why was that he read a book called The China Study. And he said, after I read that book, I was convinced that the way I had been eating prior to being plant-based was going to kill me. And I thought that was quite a provocative statement. So I said, I have to learn more about this. So I checked the book, The China Study, out of the library. And if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's written by T. Colin Campbell, who is a nutrition researcher, and his son, Thomas Campbell, who's an MD. And they just presented a wealth of information, data, studies, all documented and footnoted that showed that a whole food, plant-based diet is the best diet in order to prevent disease, diseases like diabetes, heart disease, cancer. Well, I have a history of heart disease and cancer in my family, and I certainly did not want to get that. So I thought, why not? What do I have to lose? I'm, I'm going to try this out. I don't have to commit to it for a lifetime. I'll try it for a week or two and see. So I went in cold turkey, so to speak. Um, although I think the first few days I might not have given up dairy because I was so wedded to that ice cream and cheese. But after about three or four days, I said, you know, if you're going to do this, you got to do this. So I um, gave it all up and began to eat that way. And within, I would say, two weeks, I felt so much energy and vitality that I had never known before. I was at that point in my mid late forties. Um, and then the other thing was I had been suffering with an autoimmune disease for 14 years prior to that. Um, ulcerative colitis is a digestive disease. And I'd been on one medication after another, and they only helped slightly. They helped at the margin and all the doctors told me, it doesn't matter what you eat, there's nothing else you can do. And in fact, they uh, encouraged me to eat a low fiber diet because they thought the fiber would irritate the colon. So lo and behold, about a month into this lifestyle, this plant-based lifestyle, all of my symptoms of the ulcerative colitis disappeared. Um, the doctors call that a remission. They don't really use the word cure, but the symptoms have never returned. Um, I am on no medications now. And that I did not expect. I, I really didn't go into it looking for a solution to that. That was a surprise. Um, the other thing is I did lose 10 pounds. I've never been a heavy person, but I lost 10 pounds. But my husband who joined me in this journey, he has lost 45 pounds. He always struggled with his weight and he was always borderline, you know, in the, um, in the uh, obesity uh, BMI. So he lost 45 pounds. I'm just going to add while we're talking, I'm going to add some onions to this. And that's about a half a cup of onions. So we can get that cooking. And I'm going to add uh, two carrots that I've grated. And I'm going to add two cups of uh, Napa cabbage. I like Napa cabbage. Um, Dr. Esselstyn talks about this being in like the kale family. It's a, it's a good green. So I'm going to add that in. And we're going to add some mushrooms. I have here about a cup of mushrooms. And you can use any mushrooms. I only have the plain old white button mushrooms today. But um, I think shiitake would be really nice in this too. And then I have um, four garlic cloves minced. And I have a quarter cup of ginger. Now that's a lot of ginger. I really like the taste of fresh ginger. Um, and I, I think in the recipe, I say a two inch piece of ginger, but you can make that smaller if you don't love the taste of ginger. Ginger can be really strong, but I have here about a quarter cup minced. We're gonna get all that in there and I'm gonna give that a stir. And we'll just cook that for a couple more minutes. Get those veggies going. I'm just gonna put a lid on it to kind of keep it steaming. Um, so my husband lost a lot of weight. I lost some weight, but the, the most magnificent thing for me was the correction of my illness. Um, and I just really haven't looked back since then. The other thing about 
plant-based eating that I discovered after I um, made this lifestyle change is that I felt like I was tasting food for the first time, honestly. I, before I ate this way, I used to just make meat like the, the centerpiece of every meal. So it was a piece of chicken, it was a meatball, it was a steak. Um, and that's where I was sort of depending upon for my flavor of the meal. I might have a little tiny side salad with it or a little, you know, two pieces of broccoli or maybe a small baked potato with some, lots of butter on it and lots of salt. Um, but I was really relying on the meat to be the flavor of the meal. So when I went plant-based, I realized I have to combine things. I have to come, unless you want to just eat a plate of, you know, steamed broccoli, you got to combine things. You have to use herbs and spices. And I'll tell you, I can still remember the first time I made a sweet potato burrito. Um, and I had added black beans and cumin and coriander and cilantro. And I put it in a, a whole grain wrap. I, I was like, I can't believe how good this food tastes. I realized that I really was not tasting food prior to this. And I still, this is now, um, I'm going on 14 years, plant-based, whole food, plant-based, 100%. And I still enjoy the taste of the food every single day. So um, it's, been, it's been a really a great journey for me and for my husband. And then somewhere along the way, I got into physical fitness. My son actually was the one who said, you really should get in shape. Um, you know, you, you're thin, but you don't have any muscle, <laughs> which was true. And actually, I was reading about that. And as we age, we lose somewhere around uh, three to five percent of our muscle mass every decade. Um, so in like, for example, a man's lifetime, he's probably going to lose 30 percent of his muscle mass. But there's a way to prevent that. And that's to work out with weights. So I added working out um, to my regimen. I run four, four or five times a week and I work out with uh, weights, do weight training four or five times a week. And um, honestly, I feel better now. I turned 60 this summer. I feel better now than I ever have in my life, um, really, even than when I was in my 20s. So I, can, I cannot recommend it enough for health. Okay, um, the next thing we're gonna add to the lo mein is some tofu. Now, I know Chef AJ, you don't eat soy, is that correct? It's only be it's only because I'm allergic. It's not because allergic I to like soy. It. Yeah. So, I know some people are allergic or they just don't like tofu. So, um again, I like to give people alternatives in my recipes. So, if you don't really like the idea of adding tofu to this, um, something that I think would be nice would be adzuki beans. They are used a lot in Asian cooking. It's a dark bean, it's got a lot of flavor. Um, and you can usually find it in your bigger supermarkets. Sometimes it can be a little hard to find. And I would just use one can drained and rinsed. Um, but I, I love tofu. So I'm going to add this and I like to cut it in, um, a little bit bigger cubes for this. I, I cube it, but they're a little bit large because when you stir this around, if they're small, they can really break apart. And then you don't have big chunks of tofu anymore. You just have like um, white tofu all mixed throughout your dish. So we're going to add that next. What do you do for exercise since you're such a fan now? Oh, I love to exercise. I run. I am a runner. Uh, my husband and I both run. In fact, we just, we like to compete in 5k races, short distances, but um, I run four to five days a week and I go to the gym. Um, and I, at the gym, I spend, I don't know, half an hour to an hour, uh, just doing a whole lot of different weight training. I do squats and I do deadlifts and I do push ups and, um, crunches and all kinds of things to try to maintain my muscle mass and flexibility. Cause you know, when you lose, when you lose muscle strength and you lose flexibility, it's really going to affect the quality of your life. Um, you know, you're not going to be as energetic, you're not going to be able to get around as well. And the other cool thing about building muscle mass is when you are just at rest, your, your um, basal metabolic rate will be higher. So you'll actually be burning more calories, even just sitting in a chair when you have that, when you have more muscle. So that's another good reason to do that. All right. So now we're going to add one quarter cup of soy sauce. Actually, I use gluten-free tamari and I use low sodium. Um, 
But if this is too much sodium for you, I, I have heard that people have substituted Worcestershire sauce. I can't really vouch for that. I've never tried it, um, but, you, but that's very low in sodium. And then I'm not too sure, but um, coconut aminos, I think that, that might still have sodium, but it is soy free. This is of course not soy free, um, but it is gluten free. So we're gonna add a quarter cup to the pan. And that is everything that goes in this. And you just kind of keep stirring it around a little bit until the veggies are done. So I would say about, we're gonna cook that about five more minutes. We don't wanna forget about it. So we'll set a timer about five more minutes on that. And let's just check and see how our soup is coming and everything is going along nicely there. We're gonna turn that down just a little bit. Those vegetables in the soup will take probably about 20, 25 minutes to get soft, a little longer with the double recipe. All right, so um, now we're gonna talk about the cholent. What is cholent? I didn't even know how to pronounce it. I know, right? So I'm gonna teach something today that even Chef AJ didn't know about. Um, cholent is a slow cooked stew that is traditionally enjoyed by Jews on Shabbat. Now, Chef AJ, you would ask for Hanukkah recipes, and this is not technically a, a Hanukkah recipe, but since Hanukkah runs eight days, it always includes Shabbat. So that means cholent. A lot of um, Jews enjoy cholent as their noontime or midday meal so that they can have a hot meal on the Sabbath. Um, your viewers might not know that um, Jews who are observant are prohibited from cooking over a flame or lighting a flame on the Sabbath. So cholent, this stew, is typically made in a crock pot. And you put everything in the crock pot the day before, on Friday before sundown, and you plug it in and you cook it for a very, very long time on medium or low. And then when you um, get on uh, to uh, after, you know, whatever you do Saturday morning, go to synagogue, whatever, you come back, you have a hot meal and you remove it from, you move the insert from the crock pot and there you go. Now, cholent is typically made with beans, and barley, potatoes, onions, and fatty red meat. So there's no need with all those other good things like the, the beans and the barley and the potatoes to have fatty red meat in there. So we're gonna put a substitute in for that and we're going to use trumpet mushrooms. These are also sometimes called king oyster mushrooms. This is what they look like. And you will usually find them in your larger grocery stores. Um, they can be a little pricey depending on where you buy them. So if you don't find them or they're too expensive, you could also use any other kind of mushroom. I would recommend maybe something like cremony mushrooms. But the reason I like these is they're very meaty. Um, even cooked, they have a real um, bite to them. They're, they're chewy. So it gives you that little bit of um, just like an extra texture in your stew that you're kind of like not expecting in a vegan stew. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these into chunks, kind of like meat chunks, and um, we're gonna brown those with some onions. And then everything just goes into the crock pot together. So again, another really super easy meal. So we're gonna, we're gonna switch our pot here. We're gonna keep our lo mein cooking over here and we're gonna, we're gonna brown our onions. I have another large onion here. We're gonna brown in our pan. And then we're going to chunk up these mushrooms. And you can kind of cut them however you want, but I, I like to do kind of like this. And you know, if that's too big, just cut them in half. And I use the whole thing. I use the whole entire thing. I don't cut anything off the bottom. Of course, I rinsed these already. They almost look like scallops. I, I watched your show yesterday with Cindy and um, I wonder if she's ever used these for uh, like a seafood kind of thing. because They yeah. kind of have the texture of a scallop and the stem looks like one. Yeah, that is a great idea. Just like the rice is a great idea. Now I'm thinking you could probably make gravy out of brown rice. Yes, yes. Actually, I have done that with um, mushroom gravy. I have actually added to kind of thicken it. I have actually... Um, added some brown rice, you know, kind of blended with vegetable broth or something. 
and maybe a little thickener uh, to my my um, my gravy. And actually, I am going to do next weekend. I'm doing a um, Christmas cooking demo, and I'm going to demonstrate mushroom gravy. So that's something that uh, if you're interested in, it's on my website. And we're going to make a couple other things that you can use for Christmas. Sometimes it's hard to know what to eat on holidays when you when you first eat this way. Um, I remember the first cup like year or two, I would go to people's houses for parties and holidays and I would show up with nothing to eat. I didn't bring my own food and there was nothing there I could eat. So then I learned after that, that's our timer for this. We're gonna turn that off. I learned after that, it's a good idea to bring your food um, and just you know say to the host, hostess, what could I bring? Could I bring a, a pasta salad or you know something like that? And then you always have something to eat. So there's our big chunky mushrooms. We're gonna just get a few of them a little smaller. We're gonna throw that in with the, um, the onions. Stir that a little bit. And that's just maybe about, you know, just kind of until things brown, maybe five minutes or so. And if things begin to stick, you can just add a little water to the pan. In fact, at the end, I, I like to add a little water to pick up all those kind of like brown bits that get stuck to the bottom. I, I normally use uh, nonstick pans, not always, but I, I usually do. I know there's like a little bit of controversy sometimes with that, but I like, I like to use the nonstick. So what else goes in the cholent? Well, I, I actually don't currently have a crock pot to put this in. So I'm just gonna pretend that this is my crock pot insert. But I, I want you to know that I did test this um, in a crock pot. My, my daughter has a crock pot and she was my tester and she, she really knows good food and she tested it out in a crock pot and it, and it worked just fine and she really liked it. So, um, so we're going to, when these are done, we're gonna put that into the crock pot. And uh, the other things that are gonna go in is, this is a cup of red kidney beans. Now it looks like more than a cup because I soaked them overnight. Now I do know people who don't soak their beans before they cook them, but especially when you're gonna cook, slow cook it for a long time in a crock pot. And it does work, they get cooked, but the package says, to soak them. And from my, what I understand is that if you soak them, they're easier to digest. So I am recommending soaking. So we're gonna put that in, that's a cup of red beans. And you could use really any kind of bean you like. Pinto beans would be nice, um, you know, even like white beans, but I'm gonna use red beans. And then I have here a half a cup of barley and I've rinsed this. And this is not pearl barley. This is Italian barley. This is like the whole barley. Pearl barley um, has been processed a little bit. Not that that's really bad for you or anything, but it is more processed than the, the whole barley. So we're gonna put in a half a cup of barley. And that's, I love one pot meals. I do one pot meals a lot because it's just easy. And then also this has a lot of leftovers. I would say this serves six to eight people pretty generously. Um, and you'll have leftovers unless you have a really big group. And then we're gonna put in four potatoes. Now um, you can use any kind of potato you like. You can use sweet potatoes, white potatoes, Idaho potatoes, gold potatoes, red potatoes. I, I prefer this dish, this stew to be a little bit savory. So I don't use sweet potatoes, but a lot of people do. And it would be wonderful with sweet potatoes. But I'm gonna use red potatoes I like these because they turn out really soft and creamy in this dish. And I don't peel these because this is not gonna get pureed. And I like to have large chunks of potatoes in here. Otherwise they kind of, when you cook it so long, they can kind of fall apart. And then you're in there like, where's my potato pieces? So I like to do these big, big chunks of potatoes. So we're gonna put those in. If it's a larger potato, I would cut it into more pieces, but um, I said four medium potatoes. It's sort of hard to find them the same size, but 
you know, you just kind of do your best. So we'll put those in. This one's a little bigger, so we're gonna cut this guy into, into more pieces. Otherwise, I just quarter them. I, I love stews. That was one of the things before I was vegan, um, my mother used to make this beef stew that, that I really enjoyed. And so I was, when I went plant-based, I thought, oh, I'll never have that stew again. So I started to kind of come up with my own stews, but um, this doesn't taste like beef stew, but it, I love just the stick to your ribs kind of quality it has. It's comfort, it's comfort food. Okay, so there's all of our potatoes. So we have, we have our red beans, we have our barley, we have our potatoes, we are, oh, these are browning nicely. I don't, you probably can't see this, but they're browning really nicely. We're gonna add that in just a minute. You know what I'm thinking? Do you have an Instant Pot? You know, I don't. Oh my God, how is that even possible? I know, I know, I know. I don't have an air fryer and I don't have an Instant Pot and I currently don't even have a crock pot. I used to have a crock pot. Everybody keeps telling me, you must go get an Instant Pot. And I just haven't gotten around to it. And my husband keeps saying, we have kind of a small kitchen, as you can tell, like I don't have a peninsula or an island or anything. He's like, we don't need one more appliance in that kitchen because I have a, a large coffee pot. I have a juicer. I have a, a the Vitamix. I have a uh, food processing. But I do intend at some point to, to get, to get one. Um, because here I am, you know, cooking beans for a long time, if I want to make them from scratch, or I have to buy cans of beans. And I know just for that alone, it's, it's worth the price. Okay, the next thing we're going to put in here while this continues to brown is some tomato paste. And this is a quarter cup. And we're just going to throw that right on top. And then last but not least, we have more garlic. I love garlic. I love garlic and ginger and turmeric. I use all three a lot in my food, but um, this is another four cloves of garlic that we're gonna put in there. Minced, of course. Okay, and this is pretty brown. I'm gonna show you here. So I think we can put these in now. I don't know if you can see that, but it's nicely brown. It just gives like a, a good kind of flavor to this. So we're gonna put all that in there. You need at least a four quart um, crock pot for this, if you're gonna do it in a crock pot. Now you could, um, if you're not going to uh, make this for Shabbat, you could, you could um, just cook this on the stove. Like say you wanna just make it on, you know, some some random weeknight. Uh, you could put this in a soup pot and you could cook it on the stove. I would bring it to a boil first and then reduce the heat to a real low simmer. And I would cook it um, covered for about two hours and it will turn out just great. I've also heard instead of a crock pot, you can um, cook this in, like slow cook this in the oven, set it in the inside the oven uh, before sundown on Friday and then let it cook for a long time. But I, I've never tried that. So I cannot vouch for that. All right, now we need to add some more flavor to this. We're gonna add some spices. So I have here garlic powder. We're going to add a teaspoon of garlic powder. And we're going to add some paprika. We'll do a teaspoon of that as well. And some mustard powder. Now you could also just use uh, regular yellow mustard, you know, just um, any kind of yellow mustard, fresh mustard, but I, I'm just gonna, this is just easy. We'll put in a teaspoon of yellow mustard. And then we're gonna do a half a teaspoon of cumin. And we're gonna do a half a teaspoon of pepper. I kind of never measure my pepper. I just start grinding. 
And when I feel like it's enough pepper, I throw it in. So, but you're welcome to measure it. All right. And then um, this is really kind of, I think, a, a key ingredient. I, I think so anyway. I love this. I don't know if you've ever seen this, Chef AJ, the Steitenbacher's uh, vegetable broth seasoning. I have it. Where do you get it? I get it on Amazon. Um, and it's, it's from a German company. There is nothing at all objectionable in this. This is all just um, vegetables and uh, spices. So um, there's obviously no oil. There is no salt in here. Uh, and Could you spell that for me and I'll look it up? Sure, sure. S-E-I-T-E-N-B-A-C-H-E-R. And it's also gluten-free. That's what it looks like. That's, that could be game changing. Where did you hear about it? Um, you know, I just, I was looking at, um, I was looking for something else one day and I'm, I'm going all through Amazon looking at like their food products. And I came across this and I thought, cause I, you know, like I said, I make my own vegetable broth all the time, but it might be nice sometimes just to have this in your cupboard. So if you need a quick, quick fix, just add it to some water. I just came across it when I was looking for something else. And I thought, oh, that looks interesting. And I looked at the ingredients and it was all clean. So I ordered some just on a whim and I love it. I use it in a lot of things. So we're actually going to put in two tablespoons. It has. Uh, That's amazing. Cause I always say I lose, I, I learn at least one new thing every day on the show. One new thing. So That's the good. It's our nutritional yeast expert. Yep. The extract. Mm -hmm. It does have a little bit of salt, but that's so tiny funny. bit of salt in the nutritional yeast. You're in right. the nutritional yeast, turmeric, parsley, leek, nutmeg, garlic, lavage, which I've never heard of, celery right. pepper, bomb, yeah. which I don't know of, dill, paprika, rosemary, mustard. How cool is that? Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty neat, right? Fat free. So those are all of our spices. So that was garlic powder, paprika, mustard powder, cumin, pepper, and the Seitenbacher's vegetable broth seasoning. Now, the last thing we need to do is add some water to this. Remember, this is our crock pot and it's going to take, you want to just cover all the ingredients. So it's going to take about five to six cups of water. And you notice I didn't stir any of this together. You really don't have to, because as this slow cooks, everything's just going to kind of meld together. So we're just covering everything like that. And it's so full, I can't lift it up to show you, but it's filled almost to the top. This is a four, four and a half quart uh, pot. And then you would put this into your crock pot. You would set your crock pot to medium and you will cook it for 18 hours. You will set this on medium before the sundown on Friday and then you will have it for your um, Shabbat lunch. Now, I must give a little caveat to that. You have to be sure that your um, electrical wiring in your home is really safe because <laughs> you don't want to leave um, a crock pot on like that overnight if you're not certain of that. Um, and like I said, I've, I've heard of people cooking it in the oven. I've never tried that, but can't vouch for it. But um, yeah, you, you do have to, you know, if you're in an apartment and you're not sure about the wiring, I, I maybe wouldn't try that. But that's, that's how you make cholent. Very, very simple. Now I have some completed cholent here. We're going to pretend like we just took this out of the crock pot. And I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's all done. It is a really thick, really thick and hearty stew. It like actually almost sticks to the spoon. It's really thick and nice with these big chunks of potatoes and the big chunks of, of uh, mushrooms. I can just hold that up so you can see it. It's really, it's, it's not colorful, but it's really good tasting. It's really good tasting. So that is the Cholent. Um, and now we are going to plate the, um, let me just move this over here. We're gonna plate the lo mein now so you can see what that looks like. Now I already have noodles cooked. Um, I like to use brown rice noodles, like a whole grain noodle. Um, I don't usually use, whole wheat noodles. I just don't really like the taste. I don't have a gluten issue, but um, if you like the taste of whole wheat, that's fine. But I use brown rice noodles. I've already cooked them. And when I plate this, I, I like to um, kind of layer the noodles. Let me just, 
use my fingers a little. I like to layer the noodles with the veggies. So I put like a little bit of noodles on the plate and then I get into my vegetables and I add some of those. If you stir this all together with the noodles, again, your tofu is probably gonna break apart because uh, it's real soft in there. But you just add some veggies. And then I like to add another layer of noodles on top of that. So it's kind of like a layered dish. My noodles are really sticking today. And then I put, after I get some more noodles on, then I put some more veggies on top and just eat it that way. And uh, the way the recipe is written, this will serve, this will easily serve four people if not, if not more. Always depends what you're having with it but it should serve. And, and so we just add more tofu and veggies on top. Do you cook and every day? I do, I love to cook, I love to cook. So I cook every day. Um, sometimes if I've made like a casserole or something, we might have that two nights in a row. Um, but then that means probably I'll cook something for lunch. I'll do something different at lunchtime. And I always, every night, seven days a week, 365 days a year, we eat a big green salad. Always, always, always. I make that every night and I make that fresh. And um, I like to garnish this with a few cilantro leaves. If you don't like cilantro, you could, um, you could use basil. Basil would be really nice in here. And there you have lo mein noodles or what I call lo mein love. And um, the thing about this lo mein is it, it still tastes because the cabbage and the mushrooms release so much water, it still tastes like there's oil in it. Like it's, it's like not dry, um, but you know, there's obviously no oil. It's, it's uh, delicious. Um, okay, so then the last thing we still need to do is finish our soup. And I hope our veggies are done now. Let's take a look. Yep, I think we're good. All right, so we're gonna set this, um, this uh, what, what did I do with my, I'll use this bowl. We're gonna set this aside for a minute because we're gonna blend the soup in here next. So we're gonna set aside our, our rice cream and we're going to put our soup and probably, um, I should use probably use a ladle for this so I don't burn myself. And once I get enough of this in, I'll pour it, but I wouldn't try that necessarily at home. It's pretty hot. What do you eat for breakfast every day? Uh, so I'm such a creature of habit. I eat oatmeal every day. Um, I, put, um, I put chia seeds in and flax seeds, ground flax seeds. I put in some kind of berries, usually blueberries or blackberries. I put in a banana, um, cinnamon, and this is gonna sound a little strange, but I put in matcha powder because I understand that um, green tea is very good for you, but I don't love the taste of green tea. But I find that if I put a little green tea powder, some matcha powder into my oatmeal and stir it all in, I don't really taste it. So I put that in too. So um, we eat that six days a week. And then on Sundays, we do kind of a fun brunch thing. I'll do like pancakes uh, made with spelt flour and oat flour, or I'll do, um, some tofu scramble um, and maybe some roasted potatoes, some Ezekiel bread with, um, I make a, uh, a, like a, a fruit kind of compote that I have on my website that I love to put on the bread instead of, you know, instead of like those um, oily like butter substitutes. Um, I don't use those. And I, and I usually don't use jelly or jam because so many times they add a lot of sugar to it. So I make like a fruit, um, fruit compote thing. And I, I add that. So that's kind of my, kind of my breakfast. I'm, I'm just a creature of habit and just easy. I like it. Oop. So let's just get the rest of these veggies out of here. We're going to blend this and um, we're going to add two more things to this. We're going to add some curry powder. Now curry powder can give this a little bit of a strong flavor. If you don't really love the taste of curry powder, you're either gonna to wanna to reduce the amount or you could even leave it out. But I really like it with carrots. So I have here um, a three quarters of a teaspoon of curry powder. 
and I have a little more soy sauce. Maybe I think I put in about two or three tablespoons. Maybe not all of that. Okay. And then we're gonna blend that until it is smooth. Some of our rice cream is at the bottom, but that's okay. Sorry about the noise again. And that should do it. And then we're going to put our, our little bit of our rice cream here in, and we're just going to kind of, we're not even going to, we're not even going to blend that again. It's just kind of swirls in as you serve it. And then we can serve it right from this uh, blender. And I, again, like to garnish this with a, a few cilantro leaves, put that in the middle. And again, if you don't like cilantro, I would recommend parsley here, would be great. And I don't know if you can see that, I hope you can, but it's, it's delicious, it's hot. And the reason I said this was a Hanukkah recipe, which maybe technically, again, it's not, I just noticed when I was looking up Hanukkah recipes that a lot of them use carrots. So there's something about that. So I thought, oh, yeah, my creamy vegan carrot soup. That'll be perfect. So that is it. Um, that's all I have for you today. Uh, again, the website is resolvehealthandfitness.com, all spelled out. You'll find these and a bunch of other recipes out there, articles about whole food plant-based eating. Um, you'll find a place where you can register for my Christmas cooking class, What Do You Make for Christmas Dinner? And um, just about any... Anything having to do with fitness um, is out there too. Uh, I have like suggested exercises for people who are older like me, uh, especially if you're not used to, to exercising. Um, so you can check all that out on resolvehealthandfitness.com. And don't forget to buy Glenn's book. Totally recommend Food is Climate. Thank you so much, Glenn, again, for including me in that fantastic read. And thank you, Chef AJ, so much for having me. Thank you. Um, this was a fabulous presentation. You certainly don't look older. I am. <laughs> thank you, though. Yep, yep. Yeah, I, uh, I'm up there, you know, seeing, well, <laughs> I guess technically I'm not Social Security age yet, but um, I'm getting closer. Um, yeah, I think AARP counts anybody who's over 50 as eligible for membership. So, <laughs> yeah. But well, you look amazing. Thank, thank you. you so much. What a wonderful presentation. The recipes look delicious. And you've got to get an Instant Pot. I know. I know. It's going to be the next thing I do. I There's nothing else I need in this kitchen except that right now. Um, although I hear great things about air fryers, too. Do you have an air fryer? I do. I love the Breville. I, I mean, love the air my, fryer. My, you know, my three favorite machines, I always say Instant Pot, air fryer, and Nutra Milk machine. And then everything else oh. I can put out. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, it was great getting to know you and the rest. Thank that, you so much. Great, great tips about the broth and the rice thing is just such a game changer. Thank you. Thanks so much. I've enjoyed it immensely. And I just thank you so much again for having me. It's been a pleasure. It's been wonderful. Thanks so much, Alexandra. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we have another one of the fabulous recipe contributing chefs to Food is Climate. Take care.